Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves, a YouTube channel that's dedicated to bringing you comic books and graphic novels from Off My Shelves and showing them to you. This is the first episode of a bit of a haul video that we'll be doing now because I realised I've got so many new books with lockdown and everything. I got a bit of extra money so I decided to spend too much on books obviously because I'm stuck in the house doing not much else. But I realised that I won't get to show you a lot of these books until I read them and absorb them and get to do a bit of a, a kind of review and a close look. So this is a haul video, but it's not necessarily a monthly haul. It's just what's on my shelves currently that I've recently got that I haven't read. So just on my shelves, basically. And we start with 20th Century Boys, the Ultimate Edition, Volume 10. There should be 11 of these Ultimate Editions altogether. I have all the rest of them and I will definitely be doing a video on the full run of this comic book series. It is written by Naoki Urasawa and it is fabulous. I don't often like manga that much really. Very much I love Akira and I love a few other mangas and I absolutely adore Pluto which is another series by Urasawa but this I've really liked as well. It really defies explanation in a quick pithy manner to be honest so i'm not even going to try to explain the series to you if you pick up volume one of this the ultimate edition is fairly cheap and if you like that then every volume is more of the same getting more and more in depth into the story and the nooks and crannies of every little bit of that universe that's created and so yeah pick this up if you haven't already pick up volume one though obviously not volume 10 but volume 11 will be out soon and then that wraps up the entire run of 20th century boys another new addition is teenage mutant ninja turtles idw collection volume 11 on my shelves i have all the other volumes and i've read one to ten i very much have no idea how to explain how good this is as well it's really similar to Irasawa's kind of narrative going through all those 10 novels. It's hard to kind of sum up exactly what makes them special and what makes them good. you just kind of got to get in there and read it, really. And this series of TMNT is absolutely fantastic. Binding's a little tight on this one, but normally it's pretty good. And normally they're all really well-built books. I only read the TMNT IDW stuff in this format so i'm always kind of behind waiting but i think volume 12 is coming out now in february but yeah i'm very happy to have this and get it onto my shelf really a returning series again volume three of paper girls by brian k vaughan and cliff chang you'll see cliff chang's name appear on a few other books in this collection as we go now he's a fabulous artist in every way shape and form and this is volume three and this ends the paper girl story i read volume one and two and already have them on my shelf and i have read them through twice now and so i was waiting on this one it's a 30 issue run that's wrapped up totally in this one but the look at the production quality on that cover it's just an amazing little wrap around cover but yeah really good hardback really good binding in every way shape and form obviously as normal these image hardbacks are normally very good and this is no exception to that rule and that and yeah i can't wait to get into this and finish the paper girl series because brian k vaughan is obviously a legend and cliff chang is fabulous as well and now comes more cliff chang in the form of wonder woman absolute and this is part of the new 52 run written by Brian Arzarello and Cliff Chang. Cliff Chang doing the art. Now the slipcase is fabulous. I think it's always a tie between library editions and absolute editions, which is my favourite format to be honest. They always come in this sturdy hardcover and they're always so well put together. I mean, look at this piece of work. Stunning. Now there is an omnibus version of this Wonder Woman run out. But I wanted to get it in this massively oversized format. The Absolute Editions being pretty much some of the best kind of editions you can get out there, really speaking. And this series, for those who haven't read, is very much like a, a family melodrama with Wonder Woman interwoven in it and lots of Greek gods. And Cliff Chang's art is stunning. And the storyline overall, just it is, for me, the best Wonder Woman story out there with, with ease. And this absolute version is the only way to enjoy it in my eyes anyway, because I loved it that much. 
Obviously, I couldn't get volume one of the Absolute Wonder Woman without getting volume two, and that's what this is right here, Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang's volume two Absolute Wonder Woman. And again, gorgeous slipcase, gorgeous piece of work. No dust jacket, just like the other volume. Just a nice, plain, large Cliff Chang piece of Wonder Woman art. And the back, a fabulous piece on the back there. Yeah, binding and interior, all the build is exactly the same. Little bit tighter on this binding. And volume two, it'll go on my shelf next to volume one and be enjoyed thoroughly by me, really. Anyone who hasn't read this, it's out in all manner of different formats. It's out in omnibus, it's out in trade paperbacks, it's out in uh, standard size hardcovers. It has got loads of different versions, really. Sticking with the absolutes, I got a bit of a whale for me, really. And this whale was Batman Long Halloween, the absolute edition. And this is by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Now, this is a second-hand copy. It's got a little bit of shelf wear damage on it. But I've been after a version of the Long Halloween Absolute for a long, long time, to be honest. A very long time. And now that I got this one, which is the one I was holding out for, it means that I am going to get the rest of the series in Absolute format as well. And I'll talk more about that in a sec. But Long Halloween is very much a kind of Batman crime story that's set in pretty much the events after Frank Miller's U1. But this, the artwork in it, everything about it is just gorgeous. Fabulous story. If you haven't read The Long Halloween, it is well, well worth your time in every way, shape and form. There's even a giant omnibus that collects The Long Halloween, Dark Victory, the follow-up to this, and then the one that preceded this, which was The Haunted Night. Which brings me on to the next haul, Absolute Haunted Night. Now this is three shorter stories by Tim Sale and Jeff Loeb again. And this was very much the kind of run up and the preamble to The Long Halloween and The Dark Victory, which were big sprawling stories taking part over 12 issues or so. 13 actually, I think. But this is just a few special issues that were gathered together and then republished in The Haunted Night. A far bill of storytelling by Tim Sale. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, the binding and the build on both of these books are the same, but obviously the long Halloween being a lot longer. And for some reason, this one hasn't got hasn't got that kind of image of Batman on the back like long Halloween had. Not sure why. Now it's at this point of the video that you're probably really realising that I've had a bit of a splurge on absolutes. I only owned a handful of absolutes, but the format of it, and because they're so expensive as well, I kind of just saved up a bit of money and then just bought the absolute collection that I wanted, and this was definitely on it. Absolute All-Star Superman by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. Wonderful slipcase. But this one comes with a dust jacket. And the dust jacket has that on the front, that on the side, and on the back, an image of Lois and Clark. Now, you can probably just about catch that the Superman is written on the dust jacket. It's hard to kind of show it on. Oh, there you kind of see it a little bit. It is written on the dust jacket, but I'll take the dust jacket off now. And underneath is one of the covers to the original issues. This was a, a short limited series by Grant Morrison. And essentially it's the last kind of days of Superman. Something happens and Superman is on his way to die, really. But we all know that that's happened about 60 times already. And it'll keep happening. But this is the, the last great Superman story ever told, really. And it takes into account loads of different Superman mythologies. And it's, it's worth your time, definitely. And again, this is available in so many different formats. It's unreal. Continuing the absolutes. This was an absolute bargain. Brand new, still sealed. And it was just £16 on eBay, which is insane i don't know how it was so cheap but it is absolute killing joke now it is a short story and i did own this in deluxe version but because it was so cheap and i was looking i just thought why not get it 
The slipcase is stunning with Brian Boland art. It's written by Alan Moore and Brian Boland on art. And new covers for the book itself, for the boards. So it's a stunning production. And what I love about this is the original Killing Joke story is only a short story. And this is very much like uh, Batman U One Absolute, which it gives you the recolored version of this short story. Because it was only around 60 or 70 pages long with Brian Boland art right the way through. And kind of a Joker origin story, if you will. But then what it does that's really good, that's very similar to uh, Batman U1, but obviously a lot, lot cheaper than that, is it gives you the original coloured version, the original colouring rather, it's further on in the book. And me, that's why I bought it, because I wanted the original colouring, because I prefer the original colouring, to be honest, and having it in an oversized, really strong hardback format was perfect. And the last of my absolute splurges was one I've been after for a while, Frank Miller's Ronin. Now, Frank Miller's Ronin story is one that, you hear a lot of mixed reviews around, really, but I, I really loved it a lot, to be fair. I owned the trade paperback before, but I've always been trying to keep an eye out for the absolute version because I love Frank Miller's art, and this story combines two of the things that I really, really love, which are Japanese kind of stories, stories of samurais and science fiction and this if you haven't read it is very much a combination of those two things. It starts off in kind of feudal Japan and then works its way forward into futuristic New York City. Now this does come with a dust jacket again and there's the spine and the back and if you take the dust jacket off this wraparound cover is absolutely beautiful i think it's one of my favorite if not the favorite kind of wraparound covers that i've ever seen it's just simplistic and wonderful in every way shape and form frank miller's ronin like i say is this very weird combination of a science fiction story and a japanese kind of demon tale and it's just the right amount of absolute madness and wonderfulness and gruesomeness and fights and everything and to have it in a big oversized format and to really enjoy it and get into it is just a joy and you will be seeing a lot more of this because i've already started kind of reading this this was out of everything the first book that i lumped into massively because i love reading it so on from the absolute versions we come to dark horses library editions and uh, this being the world of black hammer but also this month i picked up volume two of black hammer which is the series that this is spinning off and so black hammer volume one is written by jeff lemire and drawn by dean Olmston. and this is a direct continuation of what appears in that and what this is, is this offshoot spin-off stories by multiple different artists from that same universe. If you haven't read Black Hammer, then it is well worth your time. And it is essentially, it's like an alternative kind of, an alternative Justice League, really. Lots of characters that have that similarity between the Martian Man and Der and the other things. But they're obviously a bit twisted, a bit warped in different ways and new iterations of them, really. And so Black Hammer Volume 2 is a continuation of that story. And the library editions from Dark Horse are stunning. The one thing I will say, though, is that for some strange reason, they do give a dust jacket for this, but then the underneath of the dust jacket is exactly the same as the dust jacket, which I always think is a bit of a waste of time, really. You might as well diversify at least a little bit, but whatever. The story itself is fantastic, though, and I really enjoyed Volume 1. I haven't read Volume 2 at all yet, but I am very much looking forward to it. And volume one of the world of Black Hammer, like I say, this is much more kind of standalone stories, couple of issues and done essentially. But most of the characters, I believe, have popped up in the main storyline at some point. Certainly some of the enemies have when you have flashbacks in the main storyline. And again, much like volume two of the main series, same as the dust jacket underneath on the hardback. A little bit thinner. You'll see David Rubin as well on some of the art here, which he's a fantastic artist if you haven't gone into him yet. He's very good indeed. 
There's a binding on that. And yeah, the Dark Horse Library Editions. And talking about Dark Horse Library Editions, I finally managed to get this, which was really playing on my nerves. Volume 2 of Harrow County. And now Harrow County is a series by Callum Bunn, the same guy who has written loads of different comics. Um, the Six Gun being one for Orny Press. But this is a horror-based series that he did for Dark Horse Comics. And it's in four library edition volumes. There is an omnibus out now and lots of trade paperbacks. But... The quality of the library edition was such that I really wanted to buy them in this format. But for some reason, volume two and three are proving really irritatingly difficult to get. I'm not sure why, but it is what it is. I don't know if they underprinted that, those two volumes, but the number one and number four are quite abundant. Number two and three, not so much at all, really. And the artwork in here is to die for, honestly, it's fab. Tyler Crook is the artist, Cullen Bunn is the writer. Other artists do creep in now and again. Right on schedule there, on time. But yeah, great read. If you haven't read Harrow County, you should pick it up. If you like Hellboy or any kind of horror comics, it will be for you. I decided to upgrade. I got book one, book two, book three, book four and book five and i'll show you book five briefly now because the builds are all the same it's just the imagery and the back images change on them as you go along and obviously some of the color scheme changes so this having this image on the back and then another one would have a slightly different color scheme and uh, with a different image on the back and then the build is the exact same for all of them and they contain pretty much 12 issues of The Walking Dead in each hardback. They got a really nice end papers as well, I can't describe the material of it, but really well built books like any from Image really, but good in general and I'm looking forward to getting the rest of them. There's 16 of these in total and so at some point I will get past them all because I've read Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3 of the compendiums and I haven't read anything else so I'm looking forward to upgrading. Criminal Volume 3 and Reckless both by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Now Criminal being the massive kind of criminal short stories long stories every type of length of story that you can imagine is wrapped up in this series really there's already two previous hardbacks to this already out there this being the third and this being slightly different because it's published by image comics now the other two were published by icon which was an offshoot of marvel i think and this contains parts of the criminal ongoing series it also contains uh, My Heroes of Junkies and Bad Weekend, which are stories that have been previously released in hardback form. But they are here as well. But I wanted this because obviously I've got Volume 1 and Volume 2 and I really wanted to kind of make sure that I don't miss out on getting Volume 3. And I doubt if I'll double dip and rebuy kind of Volume 1 and Volume 2 when it comes out because they will be reprinting them in this format with that, that spine and all that, but I'm not that OCD that I need all the spines matching, to be fair. The other book that I showed you briefly a second ago was Reckless. Now, this is a standalone graphic novel that Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips brought out, and this is another crime noir story, much like Criminal, full of criminal stories, really, and this is looking to be really good, actually, because it starts off with a guy who essentially what he does is he create is he's got a little agency that takes on jobs for people. So if you want someone sorted out or if you want someone kind of taken out or done something to, then you call up this guy and he gets things done. And it's the story of him meeting up with his old girlfriend and then seeing where the story goes. This is one of a series of about three, I think, that are coming out this year. Three standalone kind of graphic novels that probably don't intertwine that much, really. We'll be seeing more from this pair in this format soon. Now we've got a couple of Marvel books, Marvels that I had never read previously really and I bought the 25th anniversary edition, that's the dust jacket there and it's by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. 
it's a classic kind of mini series really four issues told through the eyes of a photographer so telling all the main marvel stories like the death of gwen stacy and other things like that but through the eyes of a photographer within that world but this is crazy because this book has so many extras it's insane the main series the main storyline finishes basically here and then all the rest of the extras is this <laughs> all that's extra that's just the story that's extra so it's really good really good edition i only got it for cheap but i definitely want to delve into it massively and i really like the kind of wraparound cover as well the last two books are omnibuses Ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Omnibus, and New X-Men by Grant Morrison, Omnibus. Now we'll start with The Ultimate Spider-Man. I didn't really read any of The Ultimate Spider-Man at all before I kind of picked this up because what happened is I watched the movie and was so in love with the character of Miles that I wanted to experience more of his story and get into the comic book side of things really, the original stories. And so I picked up this omnibus fairly cheaply. And it's got a great wraparound cover, really. I love that. But this collects pretty much all of the kind of main storyline of Miles Morales and his coming into the world and gaining his powers and all that type of thing, really. But I'm really interested to get into this and see what it's all about. The other one is a series that I have read part of before. I haven't read the complete run, because I wanted it in this format really and I missed it when it came out to the time but I managed to get a nice second hand copy from eBay so this is New X-Men by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely I think the original printing of this didn't have the image on the boards so I'm quite happy that I've got this second printing or third printing or whatever it is really standard kind of marvel binding really standard marvel omnibus and the artwork is great and i love the bits of the story that i did originally read and so i can't wait to kind of get into it and read more and that as they say is the end of the haul so it's not normally this big this is about two months worth of books and i just wanted to show them to you hopefully you've liked some of what you saw and are interested you will see more in-depth videos i don't think this is going to be a monthly thing it'll just happen when i see a stack of books that i haven't read on my shelves i'll show them to you and hopefully you'll enjoy looking at them but i'll be bringing you a more in-depth look at one of those books or another book off my shelf soon thank you for watching bye bye